Share Shootout brought to you by Lion of Africa Insurance, ensuring South Africa's future. It's remorseless, nasty and simply cold-blooded. This is Share Shootout League right here on CNBC Africa First in Business Worldwide. I'm Bruce Whitfield. Now, if Eskim is asking staff to quit as a cost-cutting measure, shouldn't they start with the chief executive? And while we're at Eskim, didn't they just sign a 43 million rand breakfast deal with Gupta TV? Cutting costs, I guess. Well, maybe it was cheap at the price. And lastly, when next will Parliament of the Republic of South Africa see its number one and leader of the Republic, Jacob Zuma? Now, we don't know the answers to any of these infuriating questions. What we do know is that the league doesn't lie. Just take a look at what happened on the Twitter streets in the battle for fourth place between Running Dog and the Scot. Running Dog finally shaking off those wedding niceties and getting back to his sly, conniving and cunning true self. Twitter gives the three points to Running Dog, who now sits on 15, tied with Sasha Bucks and, of course, Nick the value guy. They're all on 15 points after seven matches. Now remember, just as you decide that Running Dog was the winner, you have the power to decide upon whom the next winner will be foisted and the winner, of course, of the SSO League eventually. Follow at SSO League and use the hashtags. It's as easy as funding Eskom's expansion plans. Well, actually, no, it's not that hard. Back to today's match. It's D-Day for our next two stock pickers. For these two, there is no take two. It's their swan song unless... They make it to the semi-final. At this point, my producers want me to whistle the final countdown. We're not going to whistle the final countdown. What we will give you is the players. Yeah, yeah. So I've got to look like it's um, very important stuff you're doing here. Mm, absolutely. Chris Gilmore, investment analyst with Absol Wealth and Investments. Investment philosophy is very simple. Buy quality, get paid for holding it, and really, if ever, sell. That's interesting. Yeah. I'm getting some cheeky emails here. I think we'll keep that a secret for the time being. I don't want to show my hand just yet. Biggest con competitor is the famous Sasha Narushkin. I think so, and I think uh, maybe it's a bit different from, from previous times. I think the, the mind is going to be more concentrated now. My name is Clive Ramatibela Smith. Uh, my investment philosophy is keeping to the fundamentals of investing, so keeping it simple and straightforward. Stick to the basics and make sure that uh, you create a phenomenal traction from that. My game plan for the league is to make fun of everybody else and make sure that they get embarrassed at the end of the show so that I can win simply because I get public uh, preference. My biggest competition in the show, and it has nothing to do with investment philosophy at all, it would be Gary, uh, simply because he's tall and big and I'm terrified of him. I don't stand a chance, I'm going to win the league because I feel that I've got the right criteria uh, and the right material to make sure that I win the league. I, am, uh, I qualify better on the BEE scorecard, so I hope that will help. <laughs> Both Chris Gilmore, the Scott from Absa Wealth and Investment Management, and Clive Ramatibela Smith, who is Kali from Clavera Inc., are both on 12 points, and a win could edge one of them into a semi final spot. So this is dead serious. But before we get to the bare knuckle fight, the house rules. Both players have pre picked three shares. They're on my list over here. Only I know what they hold. And each player must, of course, accept one of the other players' uh, stock picks. And each has got 30 seconds to argue their pick. They can choose from the JSE. We give them an offshore allowance as well. One international stock per round just to mix things up a little bit. The rules are out of the way. Let's get down and dirty. You haven't got divorced, have you? No, don't yeah. get me into trouble now. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just seeing it. It's, it's that telltale uh, mark. Yeah. yeah. I, I take it off when I go into the shower and I forgot this morning. So. Well, at least the sweet smelling Clive Ramatibella Smith is here. At least we know he's had a shower, Chris Gilmore. There you go. Um, <laughs> should we make him go first? Hmm. Oh. Well, it's your choice. It is my choice. I think you should go first. Clive. No worries, since I'm in trouble already. Uh, I think we should. This is an interesting one because yeah. here we've seen global energy prices elevated for much of the last two years. In the last couple of weeks, what we've seen is the oil price come off in the last quarter, down by more than 25% and sliding. Terribly good news for us as consumers. Mm. Terribly bad news if you're a shareholder in Sassel, which enjoyed a rally up to more than 600 rand, before pulling back towards 500. 
Now you want to short it mm -hmm. after the biggest collapse it's seen in two years. In 30 seconds, tell me why you want to short Sasol. It's too gigantic. It's getting too big. Alternative energy is taking up. And I think they're struggling to actually change that. That's despite the fact that the Arabs don't know where to, who to discount <laughs> when it comes to oil prices. But the important thing here is that it seems like it needs to actually change strategy because it seems like it's losing traction, especially on the global scale, with regards to what, how it's actually been generating it, its, its oil and, and getting its oil into the country. So the question is, will they last that long? And I don't think that they will because they are such a big giant. I mean, talk about 330 30 billion US dollars business. There we go. US. Okay, so you don't like it. He doesn't like them because they're too big. That's uh, one of the reasons why so many stock pickers on the show, up from 300, 400, and up to 500, have been choosing Sassel. Chris Gilmore, you can't possibly short the giant, can you? Yeah, well, I was one of them that had that uh, as, as a buy not so long ago. Hmm. And yeah, look, there's no way I'd go for a short on this one because uh, in terms of what is happening with the oil price, I remember about three years ago at the CFA conference in Edinburgh, Pippa Malmgren said that uh, so many people were standing on the sidelines back in 2008, 2009, and saw the oil price going down at 20, $30, $40 a barrel. And they sat back and thought, just let it go. This is wonderful. Because you know what? It's going to bounce because you're getting so close to the marginal cost of production. Shale oil is not an, an, a cheap uh, alternative to stuff that comes out of the ground. Now, where, where Sassel maybe could come short is particularly with shale oil, because mm. here they're going to Louisiana, pouring billions of yep. American, a US real dollar money yep, into, into the sludge beneath the surface oh. of the earth. Um, and we are seeing huge pressure being brought to bear on that industry by falling oil prices, a deliberate strategy perhaps by the Saudis who want to take on shale gas as an energy source. No, as I say, I think you're getting now, you're getting perilously close in so many jurisdictions to that marginal cost of production. I mean, the, let's take the, the Gulf of Mexico, for example, 75 to $80 a barrel just to get it out from under the ocean. Mm. So it's, I, I think we're going to see a very similar uh, thing in prospect here. And don't forget also that Sasol is twice as sensitive to the Rand dollar exchange rate yeah. as it is to the oil price. So if you're bearish at all on the Rand, I wouldn't be shorting Sasol. Okay, so if you're bearish on the Rand, which has been trending stronger in recent weeks as well, we're not exactly seeing a flood into the Rand, but we're also not seeing the huge sell-off that we've seen in the currency, anticipated sell-off that we've seen in the currency this year. In fact, it's one of the least volatile currencies, or certainly one of the least volatile years we've seen for the Rand in recent memory. So what is going for Sassel that won't make you short it? I think there are a number of things, uh, as I've mentioned, but uh, most importantly, in the longer term, it's changing the nature of its business. It's becoming less of an oil-based company and more of a chemical company. And mm -hmm. the kind of PE ratings you get in chemical companies are a good 40 You're shooting down the short. I'm shooting down the short. Clive Ramatibada Smith, you're short to be shot sad, down. I know you're tragic <laughs> and I know you're traumatized by it, but you know what? You'll learn to live with it. He has an interesting one. You're, you're a dedicated shopper at Woolies. I've seen you pushing the trolley through in a Saturday morning. Have you? Um, I have. Actually. Him and, and you know the other person I've seen in pick and pay dutifully pushing the trolley while their wife packs the trolley. Wow. <laughs> is Bernard Swanepoel. There we go. It's domestic bliss. Sorry, Bernard. Um, I, I don't think I promised I wouldn't tell. But anyway, um, you, like the, you like Woody's food, you like prepared meals, terribly convenient. And the company that makes most of those is based at Boschendal. It is the Rhodes Food Group. Recent listing on the JSC came in at 12 Rand. Everybody laughed at it. Share price came down to below 11. Then results out recently and the share prices over 13. Why do you like it? Number of reasons. You've got uh, the 30 earnings. seconds start now. Oh, okay, Tick. thank you. You've got earnings and turnover coming roughly from three areas. You've got it from long life um, in, in, in terms of cans, basically. You've got prepared foods and you've got the international side. Roughly a third from each. I think it's a nice balance they got there. It's a great round hedge stock because uh, a lot of these, uh, the, the, the international side, it's, it's going across into the likes of uh, the UK uh, with Aldi, Tesco. You remember that from, last, from the other week? Um, and quite a few of these other big retailers in terms of juice concentrates and the like. Um, it's quality, and I think uh, the earnings are going to carry on uh, being this kind of strong for a while yet. Do you buy Rhodes Food Group, Clive Ramon Smith? Rhodes. Uh, where did you say they come from? Eh? Bosch, Bosch, Bosch and Dull. Bosch and Dull. I, I don't, don't even been know out that is. You've been Just out for the, that, just for that. You've been out of the country for a while. <laughs> we appreciate that. Bosch and Dull is a lovely spot. It's just below a mountain. Just for that reason. Stella Bosch. I promise you, Bruce, that's the reason I'm going to short it, because I don't know where that place is, and I've never been to it. Anyway. What? <laughs> that is <laughs> pathetic. Nice, nice wines. It's, it's, nice wines. It's below the bill, but, you know, that's what this game is about. Unfortunately, I don't know where this portion bill is, and I'm really not interested to find out, because it's like some place where... Okay, do you shop at Woolies? 
No, I don't actually. Don't you? Okay, no. so you have So a you, I do have a simil similarity to our mates that you mentioned before. Oh, right, okay. Like the pies. <laughs> So you don't buy their products. Um, you you don't ever buy tin foods. You've, you've I do. I do. Buy okay, tin, foods, tin yeah. peaches, tin pears. He's yeah. not very good at this game tonight. No. Today is he? Um, okay. So Clive Roberts, better Smith. Based on your po complete point of absolute ignorance on the business, you, you're shooting it down. I Absolutely, simply because I don't know where they come from. Okay, there we go. I mean, I find that an interesting strategy to employ, Chris Gilmore. Um, so we'll give you more time then, because you've done your research. So, Chris Gilmore, <laughs> Rhodes Food Group, I look at it, I look at the multiple, it's expensive. It's oh, trading it's at 27 times expensive. earnings. That is the concern um, from an investment, from an investability point of view, surely? Yep, no, you're quite right. 31 times PE, in fact. Okay. But for the kind of quality we're talking about here, it doesn't come cheap. And but we saw what 30 37 percent uh, earnings increase, and I think given its rand hedge qualities, given the fact that um, it's 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 selling into into Woolies, and I think that emerging middle class that, that does shop at Woolies uh, is is very very resilient, far more resilient than the low end at uh, at, at uh, Shoprite and Checkers, for example. So you put all that together, I think uh, the likelihood is with and, and and into the rest of Africa, by the way, where you're targeting a potential uh, population of about, what 700 million yeah. people. No, I think there's some there's some great uh, metrics. Uh, there we go. You like it? You can don't I just know. Say, it? I'm, yeah. I mean, are they relying on the Willard strategy for them to succeed? Is it because now? Not the, just. The, no, no. All right. All right. Okay. All right. It's not all about Woolworths, but as you've claimed ignorance on it, you're shooting it down <laughs> just because you don't have a clue. Okay. So let's move on to the next chair. <laughs> Hopefully, there's one you have a clue on. Um, we certainly know where you get your clothes. Um, uh. because you're a dedicated <laughs> follower of fashion. Um, the most popular retail share on the JSE, yeah. it has been spectacular. What mm. a nice performer it has been. Anybody who's held Mr. Price for the last 20 years is yeah. well in the money. It is one, I think, that Mr. Gilmore has recently identified as a pick himself. Oh, yeah. So let's see whether or not he can shoot it down. Mr. Price in 30 seconds. Well, Christmas is coming home early this year. Ho, 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 because I know a lot of people will be going to Mr. Price to get their Christmas gifts. But here's the most important thing. Cash-based company, about 25% in credit as well. So that's very fantastic. I think it just allows them to that flexibility as well. But not, o not only that, over the 10 years, you've just mentioned completely uh, uh, conservative growth, which is unbelievably f and fantastic. The management is strong, and I think that this business will go and create bigger things going forward. Do you dare shoot it down, Chris Gilmore? He's <laughs> <in the> <laughs> <seconds>. <laughs> No hesitation in embracing this completely. It's a wonderful share. Okay, marvelous. And, and just to take me through then the, the hypothesis once again, because this is a company with the, probably the longest track record in South Africa Close on 30 of years. consistent yeah. Yeah. outperformance yeah. of the market. Yeah. Number of things, Bruce. I think there is a misconception in certain people's eyes. They think that the, you, you're down trading to Mr. Price. Nothing like that. You're down trade to Pep and AC Kermans. Okay. <laughs> Whereas Mr. Price, you don't. You go there because you, it's a destination shop. You actually want to buy this stuff. Now um, that, that that's been there since time immemorial, or at least since when they started back in the 80s. But now I think uh, you know their, their venture into online is proving remarkably successful. Their venture into the rest of Africa incredibly successful. Mm -hmm. Their shop in, in Accra, in Ghana, is as good as anything you'll see in Santon, and then some. Um, and they're now starting to change the logo. They're they're, they're dabbling with that as well. It's now going to change to MRP. They're getting away from this kind of price aspect. Yeah. Just you know, ah. you know, and, and it's very very clever. You know, you, you you meet these guys and you talk to Stuart Bird and Mark Blair and you see these incredible minds just ticking away. Now it's a wonderful show. Mm. It's a wonderful business. I think you've been accepted on that one, Clive. I'm a I think thank you, sir. There we man. go. Um, <laughs> if you watched the show last week, he chose it himself. Right, let's <laughs> move on then. Uh, Chris Gilmore from Absa Wealth and Investment Management. Um, to your next pick, you're going on to the smaller cap side of the market. You're not allowed to say, oh. Never heard of it. Don't know where they come from. Don't no, know no, where the no, factory no, is. No, 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 You're not fine. allowed to. That's fine. Bring your A game. Consolidated <laughs> infrastructure group in 30 seconds. Yeah, and I think uh, much of this is predicated upon the growth into Africa. You know, if you look at the African continent, um, most African consumers have less as access to electricity than just about any other consumers anywhere in the world. You know, so that that's going to be huge potential. There's a huge backlog of infrastructure in the continent, something like 93 billion dollars a year for the next 10 years. These guys are jumping in the back of that. They've got a three-pronged approach. They've got power. They've got building in, in this country particularly. They've got renewable energy in South Africa. They're getting into rail and water and other parts of the continent as well. 
and I think there's great opportunities. There we one. go. So Consolidated Infrastructure Group. It's been cho it's been chosen on the show before. It's been a quite a popular one too. It's a nice one in the small cap space, Clive Robert Tibbetts. I'm not, not sure about renewable energy. I feel it's very expensive to generate, but the mm. rest of the story is a goodie. It is a good story, and I mean the infrastructure development. We're, we just came back from uh, the G20 summit, and you heard that the most important topic is Africa and how you actually going to grow infrastructure within Africa as well. So these guys are well prepared. I mean, they know they know their stuff. The, even the co companies that they subcontract to are very good, highly qualified companies that do engineering, and, and they actually do their homework pretty well. But here's here's most the most important thing to remember here about about this particular company as well. Um, I don't know if Chris is aware, but they are actually even going into untouched territory in the Middle East. So. I, I was shocked to hear that. And, th and that is where the opportunity is because there's those kind of guys you want to be partners with them as if, you, if you're going to be investing in small caps. That's the kind of business you want to be part of. So Consolidated Infrastructure Group then gets the Clive Ramatibela Smith thumbs up. It's a salute. It's a salute. <laughs> there we go. Okay, well, let's salute him to the to next part of the show. <laughs> it was easy, wasn't it? Yes. The easiest tell he's ever made. Who's going to be the bright spark and who's going to run out of luck? Where do we come up with this? muck. Um, let's see you after the break in just a moment when we'll revisit the shares. We'll tell you what our stock pickers have chosen, where they have bombed and where they have blown it. That's all coming up in just a moment. Welcome back to CNBC Africa. You're watching the Share Shootout League, the only league in the world without a home ground advantage. This is match day number 32. And it's also the final match for K Live and the Scott in this particular segment. So let's have a look. We've got the geographically challenged Mr. Ramatabella Smith, who doesn't know where Boschendal is. That was uh, the hypothesis for shooting down the Rhodes Food Group, which he did with Summer Blom. And uh, it turns out he doesn't shop at the place where Rhodes Food Group sells most of its stuff. So Rhodes Food Group was shot down. He did, however, accept consultation. Consolidated Infrastructure Group. He took that with both hands. So uh, we've got we've got from Chris Gilmore this evening. Consolidated Infrastructure Group. Chris Gilmore, in turn, refused to accept the short on Sassel, thinking that Clive Ross Smith has gone completely bonkers on that particular point. But was more than happy to take Mr. Price, a company of which he is particularly fond. If you can be fond of it. Let's get into the final round of the battle with the last two stock picks from the evening from our stock pickers. Clive Ramatebella Smith, you went first last time. So, Chris Gilmore, looking hostile, aggressive, and <laughs> only slightly pensive, your final pick is much more interesting than his. So let's go back to Clive Robert smith <laughs> and make him go first. Uh, Clive Robert smith um, you are going for one that we've seen on this show many times before. It's absolutely enormous. It's global. Most of us have got one of their products in our back pockets. Do you? Um, well, not right now. I'll put mine just over there. I hope it's still there. <laughs> um, Visa credit cards, the company Visa, um, it used to be just about swiping credit cards, but it's a global payment system in bed with Apple doing all sorts of exciting and wonderful mm. things. Can, oh, he's still pensive and he's still got his arms crossed. <laughs> I don't think he likes this one. In 30 seconds, tell me why you like Visa. It's $235. Per share to gain into that in the first place. I think that's reasonably cheap if you look at what the, um, uh, the, the, the Dow Jones is doing at the moment. So that's the first thing that I like about it. But here's something very new that's happened now with Visa it's this new technology where now you can swipe your cell phone to actually pay for anything you go you go through which is amazing it's mobile application and all you do is you just have to have your credit card if in case you do they've launched it in kenya and it's doing phenomenally well together with uh with vodacom and impesa they're able to go into things that people all right my apologies there we go finally an apology <laughs> from clive <laughs> robert smith so visa hard to shoot down chris gilmore good luck with that yeah no it's hard to shoot down i agree with with clive um, you look at the kind of new technology, and we were discussing this with Mr. Price the other day. You, know, you go and stand in the Mr. Price queue, for example, and uh, you now you get these um, little goodies that you get in restaurants where you mm. can give you a credit card, bang, bang, bang. You're, you're getting payment pebbles uh, everywhere. And, but near field communications, I think, and the cell phone will be, will be fantastic. And, and the credit card companies um, are, are all in there in a big way. And, and, and unlike Kodak, which took a look at digital photography and went, you know what, it'll <laughs> never take on, the, the, the mobile, the Visa is taking a look at the mobile companies and saying, that 
that's the future of the way in that's which it. we're going to interact financially. Mm -hmm. Let's rather be part of the future uh, than try to keep a royal preserve all unto ourselves. Yeah. So perhaps that is the strength of it. Clive Ramati Ben Smith, visa is accepted. Do you want to say one more thing on visa? Just saying that if the Vodacom has just launched that in PESA. They are the only ones, visa with, or the only ones prepared to issue cards to go along with that strategy. So it tells you the kind of thinking that they have in mm. mind. They've certainly been a lot more broad-minded than many other payment systems around the globe. Visa Absolutely. is accepted, which gives you, Clive Ramatibela smith two acceptances, Mr. Price and Visa this evening. Let's see whether or not Mr. Gilmore is going to be as lucky with your final pick. I know nothing about this business. It's a real is estate it from business. from Boschendorf? It's no. not. <laughs> Um, but no, it, it, far it, it, from it. It uh, is an interesting one. The Rock Castle Global Real Estate. Hmm. Do educate us in 30 seconds. Okay. This is a Mauritian based company. Uh, it's about 17-18% uh, owned by a combination of uh, Capital Fortress and Resilient. Uh, it's a property company. It lists in, it, 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 should I say, invests in a whole variety of uh, REITs uh, around the world, the UK, US, Canada, Hong Kong, a variety of other countries. But it's also got direct property interests in the rest of Africa. And it's got a couple of shopping malls in, 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 uh, in Lusaka. So I think as, and, and you know, it's re, re, shopping malls in Africa are like hen's teeth, and, but the demand is huge, so I think okay. they're in exactly the right space, and it's cheap. There we go. That's an interesting one. Rock what, what Castle. Cheap, just to find 9 out. 9PE. 9PE. Yeah. Now, do we care about P's when it comes to property not companies? Me. We care yeah. more about yield, don't yeah. we? Mm. Yeah. Yield. Yield. Mm. Not a bad yield either. Yeah. Okay. So um, it's, it's, on a, it's on a decent yield. It's mm. on a low PE. Are you going to be a gentleman, or are you going to be a thug? <laughs> I, 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 I'm, 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 I'm obliged. I'm obliged to decline. You're obliged <laughs> to decline. It's going to be a mug. Um, tell me why you don't like it. This is a great global real estate story. Yeah. Property is scarce. Property is rare. Um, yeah, so is in China as well. China, right now we're talking about a property bubble. We're Do they have exposure the in China? Hmm? Do they have exposure in China? Well, Reliant. Not that I'm aware of. No. All okay. right. So, but if you, men if you mention Reliant, which is one Resilient. of the business, Resilient, Resilient, which is one of the businesses there, they've got exposure there as well. So. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, do I really want to take a chance or am I going to hit by a tsunami in Mauritius? Uh, oh, come on, they don't have tsunamis in Mauritius, as far as I know. <laughs> not recently. <laughs> Hope not. Nice place. Um, give me, give me give them some more justification for this one, Chris Gilmore, because I, I like your, st your tale that well, you tell. Uh, you know, in the wake of the global financial crisis, I think, you know, you saw property taking a bit of a slump and then it's come back very, very nicely. Mm. Yields have been growing. And I think uh, if you look at property investors in South Africa, there's been this great desire to, to invest in property outside of South Africa. Traditionally, a bit of saturation though, traditionally though, the moment interest rates start going up, property yields come under pressure yes, and the value comment. of property shares yep. and REITs comes under pressure. Yep. We're headed at some point in the future, whenever that future might be, it was supposed to have happened by now, to global interest rates rising. Yep. You don't foresee that? No, interest rates are going to rise, but I think very, very gradually. And I don't think we're going to see the same kind of really big uh, upwards rebound that we've seen in, in previous cycles. I think it's going to be far more gradual. Okay. So, on that basis, you're into the property sector. He likes Rock Castle. You're not biting. No, I think, I think if you want to go into property, and, and I respect Chris with all, um, all, all the respect in the world, but I think if you, you'd rather go for property index um, rather than go directly into the business. I think that gives you sort of some security rather than going directly into a, a single stock. Okay, um, would you rather go for thought. an index than a stock? Nope, I'd rather go for this one. Um, the, the alternative this one I thought of very carefully um, yeah. uh, was Nepi. New yes, European yes, 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 yeah. these are the guys with, with businesses in Romania. Very, very similar, you know? Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. but you're not biting, you're shooting it down. Oh, he's vicious, and he's brutal, <laughs> and he's mean. Chris Gilmore. Uh, okay, so hit us up on Twitter and vote for him, or for him, if you really must. Uh, be it a tweet or a retweet, as long as it's a hashtag, we'll count it as a vote. Knowing where Boschendal is doesn't count. Voting closes Sunday midnight. What you do is you follow at SSO League, and you do the right thing. You use a hashtag. Let me take you through it very quickly. Chris Gilmore from APSA Wealth and Investment Management with Rhodes Food Group, Consolidated Infrastructure Group, and Rock Castle Global Real Estate. State, Rhodes Food Group and Rock Castle shot down. Clive Ramatimeta Smith mm. doesn't like competitions in the R's, clearly. Uh, that sounded all wrong. Consolidated <laughs> Infrastructure Group also uh, got the big thumbs up, and let's not uh, get that. Uh, and then Clive himself with uh, short on Sassel shot down, but both Mr. Price and Visa were accepted. We'll be back on Tuesday with match day number 33 when Running Dog will take his last match to take on the good guy right here on CNBC Africa, half past eight Central African time. Till our next Fisty Cuffs, do stay cunning. Good night.